All right, so in the previous video, we saw how we can use substitution to evaluate indefinite integrals. Now, in this video, what I want to show is uh, how we can use substitution as well to evaluate definite integrals. So that makes sense, right? Because recall from the fundamental theorem of calculus that if you have an antiderivative capital F of x of little f of x, then we know that the definite integral of little f of x will be the difference between the antiderivative evaluated at b minus the antiderivative evaluated at a. So if we can use substitution to uh, evaluate an antiderivative, then it makes sense that we can use it directly inside a definite integral as well. But there's really two ways of doing that, so that's why I'm doing this video about that. So we'll go through these both methods separately. Now it's up to you to choose which method you prefer. All right, so what are these two methods for doing substitution inside a definite integral? So the first method goes as follows. So you're given a definite integral, then you can... Uh, do a substitution in there to evaluate the integral and transform the limit of integrations from x uh, from the variable x to your new variable u and then just evaluate uh, the result in terms of u. So I'll do, give you an example and make it clear what I mean by this. So uh, suppose that you're asked to evaluate this particular definite integral. So we to evaluate the definite integral using the FTC we need to find an antiderivative. Now this is not so easy here but uh, you can see that if you do the following substitution, it will become a lot easier. So that will transform the square root in terms of square root of u. And also then du will just be equal to 3x squared dx. So we see that the 3x squared dx here just becomes exactly equal to u. So uh, that will uh, simplify the integral quite a bit. But now what we have to be careful here is the fact that we're doing a definite integral. So we're integrating from a particle value of x to another value of x. So once we move or transform from x to u variable, we should also transform these points. right? So the first point here was x equals to minus 1. So we want to know what this becomes in terms of u. So if x is equal to minus 1, then u by the transformation above will be equal to minus 1 cube plus 1 which is really equal to minus 1 plus 1, so namely u equals to 0. Okay, so that's for the first, the lower limit of integration. For the upper limit, then I had x equals to 1, which implies that u is equal to 1 cubed plus 1, which is really equal to 2. So in terms of u now, I'm integrating with uh, from 0 to 2 and not minus 1 to 1. So that's what I mean here by transforming the limits of integration from x values to u values. So now I can rewrite everything in terms of u. So my new integral in u is from 0 to 2 here. And then inside, well, the 3x squared dx just becomes du, and the square root becomes square root of u du. Now I can integrate. What will I get? I get 2 thirds u of the 3 half between 2 and 0, which is 2 thirds 2 to the 3 half minus 0. Now what is 2 to the 3 half? This is uh, 2 square, so 4 times uh, to 8, square root of 8, which is really 2 square root of 2. So I get 2 over 3 times 2 square root of 2, which is 4 over 3 square root of 2. Okay, so that's the final result here. And the way I've done it here is by transforming everything into u variables and just evaluating the new definite integral using the FTC. Okay, so that's one method. Now let me show you a, a different method to the exact same calculation. So what I'll do here is do the same uh, exact same substitution, but I will not bother transforming the limits of integration. But if I do that, then I have to be very careful. I have to bring everything back to x variables at the end before I evaluate um, using the FTC. Okay, so I, could do, I do the exact same substitution here, but I keep uh, the limits of integration in terms of x. Now I have to be very, very careful with notation because I'm going to write an integral in u, but keeping the limit in terms of x. So I need to specify here that my limits are in terms of x. If I don't specify x equals here, that would mean that the limits are in terms of u. So I have to be very careful. Now my integral is the same as before. You see what I mean here. So I'm integrating in u, but I'm specifying the limits in terms of x. Right, so I really need to specify them explicitly. So if you don't have the notation here, that would be wrong. So that's important. Now I can still do the integration, just as before. I get 2 thirds u to the 3 half evaluated between, again, I need to write x here. Otherwise, it would be understood as in terms of u and not x. 
And now to evaluate this, I need to transform everything back in terms of x. So I just replace u by its value in terms of x, which is x cubed plus 1 to the 3 half. x equals minus 1, x equals to 1. Now here I could drop the x equals because I'm writing everything in terms of x, but let's just keep it to make it clear. Finally, I'm just evaluating now, so I get 2 thirds, this is 1 cubed, plus 1 to the 3 half, minus 2 thirds, minus 1 cubed, plus 1 to the 3 half. Now the second term here just goes to 0, and the first term is just 2 thirds times 2 to the 3 half, which is the same thing as I had before, namely 4 third square root of 2. So you see I get the exact same answer, which better be the case, but I've done it in a different way. Instead of transforming the limits of integrations from x variable to u variable, I've kept everything in x, but I had to rewrite my general antiderivative in terms of x before I evaluate at the limits of integration. Now you can use both methods. Uh, it's up to you. I personally prefer method 1 because pretty often once you've done a substitution, uh, the integral becomes easier, so the evaluation becomes easier. So transforming the limits of integration in my mind is often easier than uh, keeping everything in terms of x. But both ways are going to work. Only thing is that if you use this method, method 2, make sure you use the right notation, otherwise you'll use mark, and it's going to be very easy to uh, make mistakes as well if you don't use proper notation.